uh, the last messenger from God in that covenant. He also is the establisher of the new covenant, but his own at that time who did not receive him were all of those in the nation of Israel who did not receive him. Primarily, he was rejected by the majority. Only a few, only a remnant, Paul says. Only a remnant believed in him. A very small number. Paul was not even one of those. Paul was one of those who rejected him first time around. It was not until after his death, burial, and resurrection that the Apostle Paul, who was then called Saul, he was one of the Pharisees during Jesus' ministry. A lot of, most of them, the, the, the leaders, rejected him. So he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. Verse 12 says, But as many as received him, that means whoever did receive him. You see, his own, he came to, they did not receive him, but others did. As many as did receive him, what happens? As many as received him, to them gave he the power. The word power there is a Greek word, uh, exousia, which means authority. It doesn't mean power like force. It means power is in the sense of authority or, or right or privilege. A better way to say it would be the right or the privilege. To them that received him, he gave the right or the privilege to become, listen, the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, why does believing on his name cause those that receive him to be considered, have the privilege to be called sons of God? It's because he, Jesus, is the Son of God. He, Jesus, is the Son of God. And when we believe in Him, we have a relationship with God that's new. We have a different kind of relationship than, any, than, than people in the world who don't know Him. We are now sons just like Jesus. Well, I should say just like, but through Jesus, through His uh, relationship, we are partakers. As many as received Him to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on His name. It's not hard. He didn't make it hard. He didn't say even to those who did uh, you know, a checklist of things. He made it so simple that anyone could come in. You know, He made it so simple that children can receive Him. You know, in the Gospels, they brought children to Jesus. Little infants, one of the Gospels says. Infants to Him. And the disciples said, no, no, get those children out of here. This is really true. This is in the They said, get those infants out of here. They don't belong here. I guess they thought this is adult business. And Jesus said, no, uh, do not keep the children. Suffer. Allow the children to come unto Me. For He said, of such is the kingdom of God, Jesus said. And then He went on to say, whoever does not receive the kingdom as a little child cannot even enter in. So it's so simple that even a child can receive it. See, a child can believe in Jesus. An adult can believe in Jesus. Anyone can put their faith in Him and believe in Him. So as many as believe in Him become sons of God by virtue of His sonship. Uh, verse 13 says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man. In other words, we're not talking about a natural birth, but born of God. Now, why is this important? Because we relate to God not as someone to be afraid of, not as a God on a mountaintop shooting out lightning bolts. We relate to Him as a God, as a God that is our Father. Uh, Paul says, uh, because, he, because we believe in Jesus who is the Son, He has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts whereby, Paul says, we cry, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. It's a term of intimacy. We have that kind of relationship with Him. Now, let me show you another verse. And, uh, go back to Matthew's Gospel just for a second. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 7. We know Him as Father. That's how Jesus revealed. That's the name that Jesus revealed. You know, He didn't really call Him by... by uh, he didn't really refer to God in very many other ways. I would say the majority, uh, the vast majority of, of the times Jesus makes reference to God, He calls Him Father. He urged His disciples to call Him Father. When you pray, say our Father. So, Jesus comes to reveal the Father. Let me show you another one that says the same thing. Jesus has been in this chapter, chapter 11, sort of uh, condemning the, the people who did not believe on Him. And He said it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than in for, uh, uh, than this generation because they didn't believe on me. And then suddenly in verse 25, he interrupts what he's saying. Did I say... Uh, what verse did I tell you? 20, did I say 25? Matthew 11. Uh, I meant 25. <laughs> Sorry. Matthew 11, 25. Sorry. It would help if I said the right numbers. My fault, not yours. At that time, Jesus answered and He said, suddenly He breaks into a prayer again, just like in chapter 17. I thank Thee, O Father. Notice, He calls Him Father. Lord of heaven and earth, because Thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. He says, 
I thank you because the people who think they're so smart can't get it. The people who think they've got it all together can't figure this out. But the people that are simple, who are simple in heart and spirit like a babe, he says babes, he uses this word figuratively, metaphorically, or even literally, you have revealed these things. What, what, what things? Well, who he's like, what he is, what he's doing. He's revealed himself not to the wise and the prudent, or the people who think themselves wise and prudent, but to babes, but to simple people. But even so, verse 26, Father. Notice again, he calls him Father. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Verse 27 says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And who else can know the Father? He to whomsoever the Son shall reveal Him. Now what is he saying in these verses? You can't know God as Father unless you know Him through Jesus. That Jesus is the one who reveals... Notice he used the word reveal. <coughs> and to he whomsoever the Son will reveal... The Son, Jesus, reveals to us what God is like as a Father. Now this is really important. We can't allow our perception of God to be shaped by anything other than how Jesus reveals Him to be, to really be. Now let me just show you, and this is going to be short today, I don't want to keep you very long, but I just want to show you a couple of passages where Jesus reveals to us the Father and shows us what He's really like. And the whole intent of the verses I'm going to read to you now are for the purpose of showing those who are listening or those who are reading, showing all of us what the nature and what the heart of the Father is really like. The first one is here in Matthew's Gospel. If you turn backwards to chapter 7, this is the verse 7 I accidentally gave you a moment ago. It goes with this chapter. Chapter 7, verse 7. Jesus, in these next few verses, give, He gives these thoughts specifically to tell us and to show us what God the Father is like, what His nature is. He's revealing the Father to us. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says this, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now, some translations say ask and keep asking. Sometimes people emphasize, no, just ask once. I don't know. I don't know. But what he's, I don't know which is right or which, whichever way you want to take it. The point is that God has in mind that when we ask, He has in mind, not, He's not holding out on us, in other words. He's not keeping us at a distance. Jesus, you can see, whichever way you take that, whether you take it in terms of ask and keep asking or ask once, and don't talk about it anymore. Any way you take that, the intent of this is to say, when you ask, He wants to give it to you. His intent is that you should have it. Ask and it shall be given to you. Notice He doesn't say ask and, and he'll, hold, he'll keep it away from you. When He finds out you want it, then He'll make sure you don't get it. Notice He doesn't say that. Just the opposite. Ask and it shall be given to you. Now I agree. Listen, let's just be real. I agree that many times there, it seems like a long period of time. You know, I, I think God knows our hearts. Don't you think that? As a father... And that's what I'm talking to you about today. And, I'll, and I just want to say this in, 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 uh, in a sense of full disclosure and uh, just to be honest about it kind of point of view. Very rarely when I have prayed about something or when there's something, some need or some, very rarely do I see, see things happen like a snapping of a finger. What I, what's more usually the case is, is there's a long period of time <laughs> that elapses. And, but, you know, I, I, uh, I, I think that God knows our heart and He knows... Uh, elsewhere, Jesus said, the Father knows what we need even before we ask Him. But the point here is to say, here's what God is like. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Notice He doesn't say even, ask and there's a 50-50 chance. <laughs> he just says, He wants us to know that God's heart is that He wants us to, He has a Father's heart toward us. Right? Okay, to help you understand, verse 8, Everyone that asketh, asketh receiveth. Not the good, the best top ten percent. <laughs> Everyone that asks receives, and to he that seeketh, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now to help us understand further, verse nine. Listen to this carefully. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son ask bread, will give him a stone? Notice in this relationship with God, he likens him to a human father and son relationship. If a son comes and said, "Dad, I'm really hungry," you think he's going to give him a stone? What kind of father would that be? Well, that would be really a cruel father, wouldn't it? Son is starving. Son is really hungry. Well, here's son. Here's a rock. <laughs> that reminds me of the Charlie Brown Halloween special. 
when, when he went door to door, they gave out treats, and Charlie, they all said, what did you get? Well, I got this, I got that. And Charlie Brown said, I got a rock. <laughs> well, God's not giving out rocks, see. Um, 